So one of the things that when we refer to loan assumption, we are talking about what the assuming the old debt brings to the table. And when you are on the right, your deals, you have to take into consideration. So like we mentioned, we had several calls with potential investors, potential partners on looking at some deals. And sadly enough, they use the blanket statement and maybe it's because of the brokers, you know, guiding them that in that direction, that a loan assumption as a blanket statement for as a good deal is going to make your deal great. But there are some questions that you should be asking when you're assuming the loan. And the other thing that I was going to just kind of give you information on when a seller is buying a deal that is letting you assume the debt, you're going to assume all the terms that come with the established or the debts in place. And that's going to save a lot of processes, a lot of application fees, a lot of time because you don't have to get a new loan. If you have closed on a, a larger syndication, you know that that's one of the most, I would say, lengthy procedures that we do, that we have to go to apply for a, a loan. I'm trying to recall how much is the application. I know we start $50,000 just to start the application process. So there's a lot of fees associated with the process of a new loan. So when we see a loan assumption possibility, immediately we want to explore that as an option, but we have to be careful on what comes with it. So yeah, based on that, we, we want to shine some light on that aspect and on the, of the, on the writing especially. And another good potential for a buyer with a loan assumption is that you can get a cheaper final sales price because if there's a large prepayment penalty on a loan, the seller is going to include that prepayment penalty as part of their selling price or mm -hmm. some variation thereof. They're going to try to get as much money as they can to be able to pay off that loan and pay off that prepayment penalty as well as to give back to their investors. So if you do a loan assumption and they don't have that prepayment penalty, Oftentimes you'll see that you're able to buy that property at a lower price. Um, it would just kind of depend on how their loan documents are written and what the prepayment penalty might be. So I will say when you're presented with a, a deal that has the possibility for a loan assumption, they're usually, they're going to send a term sheet that has the information on the current debt. The important thing is that you are able to understand what that means for your deal and how is that going to affect not only the purchase price, but also the later, the performance later on. Because if you have to pay the fees associated with it later on, the interest that is own then that's going to kill your cash flow not only at the beginning but at the beginning it might sound appealing but then towards the end when you have to come up with that money two reasons why we're talking about this today one is that over the weekend we had somebody talk to us about a deal they thought was a good deal and they mentioned the fact that it was a loan assumption and i immediately went into a small spiel of asking questions for information and they didn't have that information readily handy but what they did was while we were having another conversation they pulled up the loan documents and this is something that you want to make sure you have access to before you go under contract. It's okay to do your LOI with terms that they told you, but you definitely want to make sure you see your loan documentation and you go through it with a fine tooth comb to make sure that you know all the ins and outs of that loan. Anyways, they brought up the loan documents and I'm scrolling through these pages and I want to say it was like a 75 page loan document and i'm looking through and I'm like, okay 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 mm -hmm, sure okay and things that i was looking at now i wanted to know when the loan term started so i wanted to know the start date on the loan and if there was an initial interest only period so period where you only had to pay interest on the loan you didn't have to pay off any of the balance or any of the principal and how long that period was in this particular loan case, I was also looking to see when the loan comes due. So the start date, the final term date. So this was a 240 month loan term, which anybody who can do quick math on the fly, that is 20 years. And so it was a 20 year note. The first five years were interest only. And then after that, you had to start paying principal <laughs> payments. Not a terrible thing on its own when you think about it all on its own. However, when it came out of its interest only period, which was only about a year left on it, the interest only period was fixed rate at 3.69, which is a great rate right now. Right. Everybody would be excited to have that. But when it came out of the interest only period, it converted to a variable rate with a spread. I don't remember whether it was based <laughs> off of LIBOR or SOFR, but in the overall, 
<clears throat> that was all I needed to see was that it was now a fixed, excuse me, now it was going to turn into a variable rate and it was going to be based off of today's market. So this loan suddenly went from being an amazing little unicorn to something very different that would take a few minutes to try to calculate. But in the end, you only really got benefit from the first year. Everything else would have been a little harder to justify, I guess, at staying with us alone. So one of the appealing factors of assuming death is that we're going to assume something that is a lower rate than what we can assure or uh, get current rates, right? But if this loan expires or fades out the interest only, which is, I call it the honeymoon, it goes away within a year, then you better start planning for a variable debt, which is what we are running away from right now, right? So being able to interpret what that means when you're looking at those documents, you should be able to make the decision. In this case, even if, if we were to use new debt it's actually better than to go in a floating rate if we're going to go on uh, the second year right the, since it's going to convert into a floating rate so you have to be extra careful and if you're not comfortable looking at those term sheets you know you reach out to somebody reach out to us let somebody take a look and make sure that you understand how long is it that you're going to gonna have a, a good permanent debt and one of the questions that i would make with that loan would be if i highly doubt that this would have occurred but would they or did they get a rate cap mm -hmm. for their variable loan portion now i don't even know if that's possible to buy one you know five years in advance but that could be a contingency for you to assume that loan is that the seller would be willing to absorb that cost to purchase and that could help protect you if that's even a possibility you would have to talk with your lender at that point to verify but it's just another thing to think about so at the moment we were able to see when the loan started when the interest only period ended how long was the actual full term of the loan and and the fact that we figured determined that the interest rate it was changing from fixed rate to variable and that you would now also have to pay a principal payment on top of that variable rate so i believe shan put in the chat that it was a libor plus three two five so that interest rate would have ever libor it is or what will at be that at that time it's already going to be it's only going to be a half a point from libor is what the original fixed rate was because the original fixed rate was like a 3.69 so with that spread it already covers that 3.69 almost and so that could make it very a very dangerous that you're in but the extra kicker was that this loan required yield maintenance for its prepayment penalty and what is yield maintenance chris oh i was just about <laughs> to go there i was gonna say so there's a couple of different things about your prepayment penalties and that is when does it stop when is there no longer a penalty for you to pay this loan off early Early. Oftentimes it's within about six months of the end of the loan and there's different types of prepayment penalties that are potentially available. But in this case, like I said, yield maintenance. And that is, I'm going to say that it is calculated off of the number of years of loan that are left Definitely. or number of months left to pay. <laughs> also calculated with interest rates that are currently accruing it, there's a calculation that they do to determine basically the amount of interest that they would have received had this loan gone to the end of the prepayment penalty period and then the seller or the person uh, paying off this loan would be responsible for paying that amount on top of whatever the principal balance is. So think about this. We said earlier that the loan term was a full 20 years and they've only gone into it for four years at the moment. So you would owe interest for the of the next 16 years when that loan gets paid off. That would be the prepayment penalty. 16 years worth of interest paid at once. So this is where I was saying earlier that the sales price would have been higher if you did new debt because they're going to absorb that cost. The seller's not going to take on the entire cost themselves they're going to make the buyer try to absorb some of that as well so this again if this was going to be a long-term hold greater than 10 years or so maybe it would make sense and maybe you would be able to find somebody else to assume the loan but you can't count on that and you you have to do what's best for the deal for you and if it's step away so you step away if it's assume the loan then great if it's get a new loan that's fine too you just have to remember you might end up with a higher final purchase price that you would have to capitalize for. Now, the other versions of prepayment penalties are a step down. So, and oftentimes you'll see this with a bridge loan or maybe a seven year rate where years one and two, it might be locked out. 
and then they do like a five, four, three, two, one step down. And that would be the percent of due for, excuse me, the percent of, of payment penalty due based on the principal that was left. So in year three, you would have to pay a 5% prepayment penalty. But in year six, six into, uh, into the end, you would only owe a 1% prepayment penalty of the loan balance that was left. Anyway, so a couple of things here I would like to go back to touch bases on.